Hey y'all, it's Brandon. So in the last video, you see me take apart this piece of junk here, and you got to see all the corrosion that was inside of it. There wasn't as much corrosion as I thought there was, but I still think there was enough to make it not work. So I ordered a new one from Flagship One out of New York. And that came in today. Let's take a look at it. So I was kind of surprised it didn't come in a box. It come in three, it come wrapped in three of these envelopes, but it made it in one piece. So it took a little longer to get here than I expected it to, but that that was fine. It uh it's not like I was gonna work on it in those eight days anyway. I had other stuff to do. So it's here now. Let's throw this thing in the bus and see if it'll fire up. So I took and cleaned those connectors with some uh, contact cleaner. So that's been a couple days, so it's dried. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'll get some dielectric grease. I'll put on those plugs and uh, we'll uh, throw that computer in there. So I got this dielectric grease. We're gonna put on the plugs and then slap that computer on. All right, so one thing I was told was to not put it on the pins on the ECU or the ECM. Now, I feel like that's what this stuff's made for, but I'm gonna go ahead and not put it on the pins and uh, just put it around the outside edges, and hopefully I won't have any problems with it. The way this is on the bus, you have the, you have the brake booster, which is a hydro boost, so it's got power steering fluid that runs through it. Plus you have your brake uh, reservoir there. All that is over the computer, which is a terrible design in my opinion. And then you have the water that runs off the windshield comes right down there on top of the computer too. So there's three strikes against it there that uh, I really should, I really think I should put it on the pins. If it says not to, then I'm not. All right, so one thing I did see, you notice didn't send new silicone gaskets with it. So I don't know, I don't know why. Maybe I got gypped, but I'm gonna clean these up real quick and uh, put them on here. I don't know why it didn't come with rubbers. Come on, flagship one. 
expected it to come with them. You see, these are kind of beat up. There you go. It's got quite a bit of frozen in there. See, got all the corrosion off of that, and uh, put a little dielectric grease on it, and uh, stuff it in the hole of the plug, I guess. Okay, so I got them cleaned up as good as I can get them. It's uh, still got some corrosion in it, but I'm gonna put that dielectric grease on them and slide them in the plugs. Got some of that on my fingers here. I'm just gonna wipe it down. It don't have to have a thick coat. Let me get a rag and I will, uh, I'll grab the computer. I put all of the grease on the plug, nothing on the computer. Also, I have the battery disconnected. I was just looking and you can see a little bit of sand in that seal there from them sandblasting this. It's got a lifetime warranty, so We'll see, huh? Okay, we got the J1 plug, the blue plug. Let me grab my eight millimeter wrench and then we'll tighten it up. Let 
may have been seven millimeter. Yeah, seven millimeter. All right, so one thing I probably should have done was check all of my pins in the plug with power to see if they had the right power in the ground. I didn't do that. I'm hoping I can just throw this computer on and it'll run. What I did do was check the wires here about an inch, two inches away from, away from these plugs just to make sure there wasn't any of them that cracked or corroded or anything like that, and they all look pretty good. See all this mess I gotta get through. It's kind of a kind of a hassle. You got some wires here. You got the power steering reservoir. You have the um, hydro boost lines that come through there, and then you got to get it tucked back in this little bitty uh, this little bitty bracket. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so I've been fighting this thing for a little bit. Mosquitoes are eating me up. And I had to go back and look at my previous video to uh, see how the ECU actually goes in. So I got that figured out. So you can watch me take this one back out and put it back in right. ECM's in. So now you have to do a key program on this vehicle. So it is try to start it, let the lock come on, the security lock come on, let it sit for 10 minutes, turn the key off for 30 seconds, turn the key back on for 10 minutes, 11 minutes, turn the key off for 30 minutes, 30 seconds, sorry. I got to do that about four times. So I still have to connect the battery cables. The one thing you have to make sure is that you have a full charge or some other source to charge the battery while you do this. So I don't think the battery's good in the van. It may be, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect the jumper cable to the Suburban and let it run. And then that's just why you see the Suburban. There. So if you're watching this for my van content, don't mind, check out the Suburban build. I got some videos to build the Suburban, the solid axle Suburban, 2003 model. Don't mind, check that out. All right, so I'm gonna hook the jumper cables up, get this battery good and charged, and then we'll try to fire her up. 
Bourbon up, let it run for a little bit. It's gonna be probably 30 minutes for me, but it's gonna be just like. All right. So with the bus, it did not have the key where I had to relearn the key. So I got this charged, and uh, we're gonna see if this thing will fire up. The exhaust is right back here. It's not been started in about six years, so I imagine there's gonna be a lot of smoke if it starts. I don't know if it's gonna start or not. So probably the only way you're gonna be able to tell with the Suburban running is if the exhaust smokes. So keep an eye on that. You wanna come over here?